For thousands of years, the only way to get ice was to harvest it and ship it. And up into the 1960s, northeastern Iowa was one of its main exporters. To celebrate its history, Lansing, Iowa has started holding an ice harvesting demonstration every February to show the current generation all the work that went into getting ice before the advent of the freezer. When it comes to celebrating a community's heritage, most areas would opt for warmer temperatures and clear skies. But for Lansing, an Iowa town in the farthest northeastern reaches of the state, to properly represent its history, observance must be made at the coldest time of year. So come February, Lansing hosts its annual Winterfest, embracing its frigid legacy with sleigh rides, snowshoe hikes, ice carving, and chili cook-offs. But in recent years, the town has included a piece of area history that has almost been completely forgotten, ice harvesting. From the late 1800s until the mid-1960s, Lansing was a well-known harvester and exporter of Block River ice. With the railroad carving right through town, an ample supply of frozen fresh water, come winter, Lansing was an ice harvesting powerhouse. The ice field was, got very large. Um, it would be would twice the size of a football field. And it, it was a big production, three or four trucks hauling steady. All right, go, 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 go. You know, it employed a lot of farmers, construction workers, and grocery stores each had their own ice crews, and there were several ice houses around town. Seven big ice houses, you know, they were hold several tons of ice. Oh, many, many tons. Yeah. Um, Married more than 50 years, Karen and Gary Galima are two of the few remaining connections to this piece of Lansing history. I got in on the last harvest that they did commercially in the winter of 64, 65. I was a truck driver through here, and her dad ran the local fish market. And so between Christmas and New Year's holidays, there's no fish sales, so her dad asked if I could come over and drive truck for him to haul the ice from the ice field down to the ice house. So I had a little bit of an idea of what we're doing out here. Go, 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 go. I don't do much work anymore. I just kind of watch and tell them what they're doing wrong, but I, I let them try it first. <laughs> <laughs> In spirit, the demonstration showcases what went into ice harvesting. On a smaller scale, there's the same tools and basic processes. A grid is plotted on the ice and carved with a sleigh blade and saws. followed by long metal picks breaking ice blocks and loading them onto a truck with tongs or a pole and rope. Unlike an actual harvest that was dangerous non-stop work, the demonstration is much more about fun. And even a few activities that are decidedly not traditional. While the demonstration is all about smiles and a fun winter activity, for years, ice harvesting was serious work and a means of making a living. Familiar faces seen in this 1948 crew are Jack Ehrlich, Ben Sweeney, John Protzman. For generations, this was the only way to get ice. Hordes of men would descend onto the frozen banks of the Mississippi and area lakes to saw, pick, pry, and load up block after block of crystal clear ice. Almost all the little river towns along here had, had ice crews. Yeah. Harper's Ferry, um, DeSoto. I remember when we used to ship ice out east, the rail cars weren't refrigerated. And they packed them in river ice because we had a big crusher at the fish market you'd still have chunks of ice this big, and they would hold on the fish all the way into New York or into Chicago or in, out to the West Coast. Each block of ice weighed several hundred pounds. In its heyday, ice harvesting provided a good income, as well as barns full of ice blocks that would stay frozen year-round for keeping meats and dairy, as well as fishermen's needs. And while today's demonstration looks strenuous, 
it's nothing compared to what actual ice harvesting demanded. Before these gas-powered ice saws, we have a horse-drawn ice cutter that the horses would pull across the ice, but you had to make three or four trips with that because you could only cut about an inch at a time to get deep enough to where you could spud it off. So when you have nice, smooth, frozen ice, two people can just pull that saw. They don't really pull it, it will pull itself, drag it to the other end, back and forth all day long. It was, a, it was a tough life, it was a hard life, and you learned early on that you had to be hard to survive. It's important that the kids realize what is involved, and there's nothing like first-hand experience. Like so many skills and trades before it, ice harvesting is an industry that in our modern refrigerated era is commercially impractical. Now the back-breaking, freezing-cold work of harvesting has been retired to museum shelves and history books. Still, it's demonstrations like Lansing's Winterfest that helps connect the next generation with its past. I do a lot of classes that come through the museum, and when we get to the icebox, they'll say, what, what do they need an icebox for? And, you know, it's a simple answer. Well, you know, they didn't always have ice makers in every um, refrigerator, so, that's where it came from. It came from hard work, sacrifice, um, and it came from the river. <laughs>